Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the members of the media here in the room and welcome to our global audience on the live stream and webcast. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm uh, very honored and proud to present this distinguished panel today. Um, to my immediate left is uh, Minister Johann schneider Amann, who is the Minister for Economic Affairs, um, Education and Research of the Swiss Federal Council. And um, also, um, we are joined today by Director General Roberto Azevedo of the World Trade Organization. This press conference has some uh, somewhat of a tradition here in Davos. Um, the two gentlemen are coming directly from the informal gathering of ministers, and um, we are very grateful that we, they will be sharing their key findings today uh, with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to this uh, press conference at the occasion of uh, the two days informal <coughs> WTO ministerial gathering. With uh, me today is WTO Director General Roberto Acevedo. Uh, this morning, 21 ministers, together with Roberto Acevedo, met under my, met under my uh, chairmanship for the informal discussion and the upcoming negotiations in the WTO. First, I would like to give you my assessment of today's meeting, and then I pass to Roberto Acevedo. We had a good and open discussion this morning. I want to summarize this discussion in 10 uh, points. First, uh, 20 years after the organization's establishment, we shared an understanding that uh, very important objectives are on the WTO's agenda in 2015. And we expressed our confidence that members will succeed in meeting these objectives in a timely way. Secondly, we reiterated our commitment to implementing all decisions taken at the ninth WTO ministerial conference in Bali including on public stockholdings for food security purposes as amended in November 2014. The third point, we concurred that by July, a detailed work program will have to be defined, setting up a credible and realistic path towards a conclusion of the Doha development round. Fourth, a sense of urgency must be instilled to the work in Geneva. Intensive efforts will be required in the three main areas of negotiations, namely agriculture, non-agricultural market access, NAMA, and services, but also in uh, other fields. The fifth point, the development dimension, and in particular aspects, relevant to least developed countries will have to remain at the center. Six, the key issues will need to be identified rapidly and addressed in a transparent and inclusive way. We should be aware of each other's interests and constraints, focus on what is doable, doable, consider new ways of engaging in order to move ahead more efficiently and be prepared to review long-standing negotiating positions. Seventh, we welcome the process set in motion in Geneva towards reaching these objectives and concurred that this shift in gear has to be sustained by a high level of engagement by all members, also in capitals. The eighth point, some of us also mentioned the importance of delivering concrete outcomes in plurilateral initiatives on a most favored nation basis, such as the amendment of the Information Technology Agreement. Ninth, we furthermore welcome the decision by members to hold the next WTO <coughs> ministerial <coughs> conference for the first time in Africa and thanked Kenya for hosting that conference in December in Nairobi. And last but not least, we agreed to remain engaged in view of making the ministerial conference uh, in Nairobi a success, including 
by supporting timely ratification of the trade facilitation <coughs> agreement. That's a summary of the two days uh, ministerial meeting. Thank you, Minister. And without further ado, um, over to you. Well, thank you very much. I would like to start by thanking uh, the Swiss government and in particular uh, Minister schneider Amman for holding um, the meeting that uh, we had today. Uh, it was uh, a very important one. It essentially marks uh, also the 20th anniversary of the WTO and to acknowledge, of course, the important role that the WTO has played over the years. Um, we have um, key milestones coming up, and we discussed them today. Of course, the first one is July, when we are supposed to conclude uh, a work program uh, for the conclusion of the Doha development agenda. Uh, and another very important milestone, of course, is the 10th ministerial conference that is going to be held in Nairobi in December uh, this year. Uh, this is our first ever ministerial conference in Africa, uh, and the first since our successful uh, meeting in Bali. Uh, so expectations are naturally uh, high. And I told ministers uh, in the meeting that uh, after a very positive end to 2014, uh, we are starting this year with a lot of momentum. Um, and I told them that things had already started in Geneva. Uh, last week, I actually started uh, an intensified process of consultations uh, with the aim of agreeing uh, on the work program that we are supposed to conclude by July. Our goal is to prepare a very detailed uh, work program. Uh, we want it to be as specific as possible so that if we deliver that, we should be in a position then to conclude the negotiations in a short period of time. Uh, but to do this, uh, we need to urgently uh, engage in a much more substantive, detailed, and precise manner, specifically in the core issues, so agriculture, industrial goods, and services. But not only that, we also have to engage on all the other DDA issues, including the development issues and the ones that are uh, a priority for the least developed countries. And I, and I told ministers that I needed their support, their personal support, for this kind of discussion. I asked them to instruct their ambassadors in Geneva uh, to stop speaking in general terms and to engage on the specifics. And I urged them to give their ambassadors uh, the green light to take risks and to put their cards on the table. So this is the only way that we're going to make progress. Ambassadors need the political will behind them uh, to engage in an open and constructive way. Um, and I'm pleased to say that the minister responded very positively to this uh, call. Uh, what I have seen and heard in Davos and in Geneva in recent days is very encouraging. Uh, a spirit of urgency is there, but also a spirit of realism. Uh, it is beginning to sink in. Uh, all ministers realize that we are, again, at a critical juncture and that we have to deliver results if the multilateral system is to prosper. And I have heard things in recent days that I have not heard in many years. Uh, ministers now fully understand that we can't continue to dust off uh, tired positions on the issues of agriculture, industrial goods, and services. We have to change the nature of our conversations. Now, we will need to be creative and open-minded, that's for sure. We need to understand that it is not enough to say what you want. Uh, you also have to say what you are ready to give. So this is crucial uh, for us to move forward. It is a fundamental year for the WTO. Uh, we have the opportunity to deliver really some substantive outcomes uh, which will bring real economic benefits for everyone and for a global economy that is really in need of good, good news. So there is a lot of work ahead, uh, but I think uh, that we took an important step forward today. So thank you. Thank you very much for uh, sharing the insights from the informal gathering. Um, for the sake of our online audience, if there are questions, please state your name and organization. Um, we have a microphone at the back. There's a gentleman to the left. 
Hi, I'm Daniel Rittner from Brazil's uh, Valor Econômico. My question is for uh, uh, both Azevedo and the minister. Uh, first, um, when you talk about a work program, does that involve uh, drafts as well? Um, and when uh, should the drafts uh, be delivered? Uh, secondly, um, I think it would be almost impossible to conclude the Doha round without uh, touching uh, agricultural subsidies. Um, as far as agriculture is concerned, um, how ambitious uh, do ministers seem to be? Thank you. Well, uh, the mandate doesn't specify what shape or form the work program would have. So I suppose that uh, members will decide as we get close to July what kind of work program they are ready to deliver by that time. We set to ourselves a goal to have a work program that is as close to modalities as possible. Um, so if we can get to, for example, full modalities uh, by July, perfect. Uh, but the, the goal is to be as close to modalities as we can. Um, when? July. That's, 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 that's the purpose. Uh, if we don't get to full modalities by, by July, then we have to see how far we are and decide what the next step would be. And uh, then we'll decide what that means in terms of chronology. Uh, on the ag subsidies, uh, it is clearly a very important uh, part of the conversations. Um, as you know, since 2008, things have changed considerably on that front. Um, and I think what we need now is precisely to have a conversation to look at where are we today? Uh, what are um, the political realities of today's world as far as domestic support is, is, is concerned? And then that conversation is precisely the one that, that we need to have. Um, I don't have enough elements at this point in time to say how ambitious we can be there. Uh, it's too early in the conversation to do that. Um, but clearly, uh, there is a sense that this is, this is going to be one of the critical um, uh, elements of the conversation. Thank you very much. Um, can we have the microphone in the first row here? The lady in the middle, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gunilla von Hall, Swedish, Svenska Dagbladet. I have another question, and it concerns the ECB decision. Um, this Whose position? The ECB's hmm. European Central Bank decision this week. Um, how do you think this is going to affect the outlook for world trade? Do you think this will mean increased trade, increased consumption? Thank you for the, for such a delicate question. <laughs> <laughs> Principally, it should uh, strengthen uh, the uh, trade uh, within the European Union and uh, uh, over the uh, boundaries of uh, the European Union. But the first and principal idea behind is uh, to to win time, so to make sure that uh, European countries get a chance to attack uh, some uh, structural problems. But I assume that the trade volume uh, gets uh, stimulated in a positive way. Well, uh, one of the reasons that the economists uh, tell me that uh, growth in trade has not been as significant as before is because the contribution of the European Union has been small. Uh, the EU is, I think, responsible for about a third of global trade. So it's a, it's a big chunk. And to the extent that the European economy is not uh, growing fast enough, of course, trade suffers. Um, to the extent that the measures uh, taken by the ECB are precisely directed to foster economic growth, if that economic growth comes about, uh, we should see a pickup on trade, not only in the EU, but globally. So I hope that, um, that the, these goals are achieved. Thank you very much. Do we have any other questions? Yes. 
The gentleman there, please. Um, my name is Kelly Louis Pedersen. I'm from Monavisen in Denmark. Um, Mr. Asavedo, have you gotten any guarantees from the ministers today that they stand by all commitments so far in Doha and that no one will backtrack? And secondly, do you think the timing is right, given uh, that the World Bank issued a report earlier this week saying all major commodities, including ag commodities, are dropping in prices and hence the demand for ag subsidies may be increasing? Thank you. Thank you very much. I think there was a second question over there. Can I see the hands? Yes, uh, Mr. Fisher. Peter Fisher from the NZ. Uh, <coughs> the minister was talking about <coughs> new ways of engagement that are needed. Could you evolve a little bit on, on that still? And uh, um, second, in, in given that it's 20 years now, are there any discussions uh, whether the WTO should have any institutional changes, for example, uh, in decision making or so, to improve? And last question, uh, TTIP and T, uh, TPP, how do you see the interrelation between uh, progress making in the Doha round and uh, these two big trade initiatives? Thank you very much. So we had a question on the commodity prices and uh, Start? I'll, I'll, I'll start with the first one, uh, first group of questions. So on, on, on backtracking, I think uh, the, the idea today, what I understood that the ministers want to do and they agree to do, uh, I actually asked them to consider that and they agreed that that would be the way forward, is to look at the situation of the world today. Um, look at what they think can be done at this point in time. So. What kind of, how big a step can we take at this point? How far do our legs today allow us to reach? And it may well be that in some areas we can go further. It may be that in some other areas we need to, to be more conservative. Uh, and we will only know when we have the conversation and when we talk to each other about that. And we haven't really done that. Um, up to now, and that's the major shift, up to now, uh, conversations were mostly about um, who was or who was not uh, um, in a position to do, you know, what we had agreed until 2008. And there was a lot of finger pointing and a lot of, uh, of um, accusations, uh, you know, on, from one side and the other about this one is doing this, that one is doing that. We decided that we have to change the conversation. We're going to now look at the world today and say, so where are we? Uh, what are the things that are actually doable? What are the things that are feasible at this point in time? What can we do? How far can we go? How ambitious can we get in the different areas? Maybe in some areas, like I said, you can be more ambitious. In other areas, you can be less ambitious. It will depend. It will depend on precisely on this conversation. So I, I think that people are open-minded. And uh, at this point, uh, we don't know what that conversation is going to um, yield. Uh, on the commodity prices, that's precisely what, what I was just saying. So the world changed. There was a period where commodity prices were very high. Now the commodity prices are going low. And if we look at history, they're going to go up at some point in time again, and they're going to go down again at some point in time. So that's, that's economics. I mean, that's, that's the reality of the world. But the, the most important now is to see about uh, you know, the, the political circumstances in each of the members. Um, each one responded to the crisis with different programs, with different policies, and these things changed uh, the, 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 the kind of, uh, of political sensitivities that we have before us. So that's what we have to look at and see what can be done. So that's, that's where we are. Can you it, uh, ask it, the question again? Because our online audience will not be able to hear you without I the microphone. Just Thanks. Just the follow up: whether you actually may be in the position that you have to start again from scratch in Doha? No, no, no. I don't think so. I think you have a mandate. Uh, it is clear that nobody is reopening the mandate, so the mandate is the same. 
Uh, the areas that we have to deliver are those ones that has already been pretty well defined. It is about uh, calibration. It is about figuring out um, the fine-tuning. How, how, how far do we go in one area? How, how far can we go in another area? So that's, that's what it is about. It's not about uh, throwing all the work that we have done out of the window and starting from scratch. It, it's never going to happen. On the contrary, what we want to do is build on what we have done already, is to preserve as much as possible of what we have done and the work that we developed over the years. If I may, institutional questions were not the topic of uh, the two days ministerial. And uh, what really matters is that we're gonna achieve results uh, by the ministerial conference in December in Nairobi. Uh, we spoke about the year of, uh, of uh, credibility. In other words, uh, if we achieve uh, results, if we can uh, uh, conclude the Bali uh, package, uh, definitely we will have solved uh, the credibility of the WTO. WTO is at a... 20 years anniversary, yes, and this uh, needs, uh, should be understood as an initial point for the next 20 years. Multilaterality is still of the utmost importance, and that was confirmed by all the ministers who participated in the two days uh, meeting. And I want to confirm to you uh, that uh, the ministers have demonstrated a willingness to meet each other in a open, in a frank, and in a constructive way. I'm now, me too, participating since uh, fifth, five years in this uh, process. It was the clearest commitment today uh, I ever uh, could, uh, uh, could uh, uh, live uh, me uh, too. In other words, I'm very positive I'm encouraged after this meeting. We've, we have a will, we demonstrated a will, and uh, Roberto mentioned it uh, before. It's a, it's, a, it's a giving and taking at the same time, and the detailed discussions uh, needs at least uh, the upcoming 10 months uh, to bring up a positive result. It's now the time. We wanna uh, bring the multilaterality first. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have uh, time for one more question. Uh, John, please. John Helper and Associated Press. I'm just curious if you um, would agree that there's a war of sanctions um, between Russia and the West over Ukraine, and if so, um, if you think that that has actually, or maybe the institution of the WTO has actually helped to in any way to reduce tensions. Maybe that's a proper function of the organization to sort of uh, take some of those tensions um, and put them in an institutional rather than military form. I don't know. Um, just wondering what your comments are on that. Thank you. Well. Can I go first? It's a very political uh, issue you raise. Uh, I would uh, very generally uh, answer to you, each uh, multinational organization is uh, expected to contribute to bring uh, partners together to lower the tensions, and hence the WTO uh, plays an important role in this context as well. <coughs> well, I. I entirely agree. Um, it is one of the functions of the WTO to serve as a forum for dialogue, as a forum for conversations and for consultations. And members use that. They use that quite a lot, actually. Uh, one of the things that we, that we do is precisely that, is, is to um, bring issues, uh, trade issues, to the WTO. Uh, members consult and they in the regular bodies uh, and then if they don't they're not happy with the result of those conversations they ask for consultations under the dispute settlement mechanism 
uh, and after that they may take it to dispute settlement and that you know you have a technical very objective uh, assessment of uh, the implementation of the disciplines um, if members but it's essentially the members who will decide how they want to use the organization how they want to use the institution to uh, approximate positions and to uh, reduce tensions um, it, the organization does not go out there uh, proactively trying to solve problems that it's not in, the, in my competence or the competence of the organization. It is the members who will decide how best the organization can serve them uh, in approximating positions. So that's entirely in the hands of the members how they want to use the organization. Um, there was also a question, I don't want to skip that, uh, about uh, the relationship between the, these regional agreements, uh, TTIP and TPP and the, and the DDA. Um, my view is that uh, uh, trade liberalization is contagious. Uh, it is a frame of mind. So to the extent that you have big countries, big blocks, thinking about trade liberalization, negotiating agreements, um, approximating positions, uh, developing rules and disciplines, that should inspire the work of the organization. That should inspire the work of the WTO. I don't think that it in any way detracts or in any way reduces uh, the possibility of progress in the DDA. On the contrary, it should enhance the possibility of progress uh, in the multilateral system. So I'm very optimistic and hopeful that these uh, agreements come to a successful conclusion. On decision making, if you are asking about consensus, it's not going to disappear. It's as simple as that. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. To begin, the question is not um, uh, whether we, 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 we change the process of decision. It's how do we deliver with the process of decision that we have today. The, big, the, 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 the first countries that are not going to agree on abandoning the consensus rule are the big ones. They are not going to agree to voting. Uh, mechanism in the WTO. It has, it's, it's just uh, politically impossible. It's not going to happen. So to answer your question very bluntly, no, it's not going to change. The decision-making uh, process in the WTO is not going to change. It's about, we have plurilaterals. We have several plurilaterals in the WTO. We have the government procurement agreement. We have the civil aircraft agreement. We have the ITA, the information technology agreement, which in fact we are trying to expand now. We have negotiations on environmental goods. So plurilaterals are not a novelty. It's about which kind of, 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 of a plurilateral and whether members want to do it. Um, the, the, the consensus rule doesn't stop members from reaching plurilaterals. It depends on the type of plurilateral. That's what, uh, what, what it's about. But that's a more technical conversation. But members are free to, to, to work in a non-multilateral form at any time that they want in the WTO. Thank you very much. We have uh, reached the end of this press conference. Thank you, Mr. Azevedo. Thank you, Mr. Schneider-Amann. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, um, thank you for watching.